to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good evening, I'm Keaton Hall. The 2022 Fall Knott County Horse Trail Ride will be kicking off next Sunday, but this year's festivities will be focused on more than just offering people an escape from the stress of everyday life. WMT's Alyssa Williams has a preview on the upcoming trail ride and how it will benefit those impacted by recent flooding. Soon enough, these empty fields will be filled with vendors, campers, and horse enthusiasts. So this year's event's a little different than events we've had in the past. Following devastating flooding that impacted Knott County and other parts of the region, those with the horse trail ride and Knott County tourism will be dedicating this event to those victims. Hopefully everybody will come back out, come out to it, and it'll be a big crowd and everybody can you know, enjoy it and take their mind off of what's happened. It's the disasters that's happened here lately. All proceeds from the trail ride and the concert will go to the Knott County Long Term Recovery Group and all flood victims staying at the Mine Maid Campground and the Car Creek Campground will get in for free. Hopefully this will be able to take some some of the thoughts off of people's minds from the flood and from their uh, troubles. So, uh, you know, this is, we, we want to use this as a act of encouragement to people that, uh, you know, there's a, a rebuild in process and uh, things are better ahead. Knott County Judge Executive Jeff Dobson says each of the trail rides largely benefit the local and regional economy, which will also play a role in recovery efforts. You know, they come here, they're going to see it for themselves. They're going to see it firsthand to uh, be able to drive around our communities to see the devastation that we've been dealing with. And we, we feel like that's gonna draw more people to wanting to donate, to wanting to help rebuild our community. Aiming to use their festivities to do good. In Knott County, Alyssa Williams, WYMT, Mountain News. The Fall Horse Trail Ride will also include a concert with headliners like Noah Thompson and Tyra Madison performing. Gates will open Sunday, October 2nd, with festivities ending on the following Saturday, October 8th. A local church held a special Sunday morning service at Carr Creek for flood victims. Summit Community Church took their spirit and food to Carr Creek, spreading joy to flood survivors. Despite rain changing their plans, the church was still able to support those staying in temporary trailers. Flood survivor Kayla Morton says the church adds some normalcy back to their lives. You know, there's still a lot of people that they don't have vehicles or, you know, they can't afford the gas to go to church. And they're able to go to church without even having to leave their homes. So that is really important, and we really appreciate that. Summit Community Church Pastor Mark Combs said they felt called to serve even in the rain. Well, nearly two months after deadly flooding in our region, one sheriff says his curfew is coming to an end. Breathitt County Sheriff John Holland posted on his Facebook page it's going to end at 6 p.m. 6 a.m. Excuse me, Monday, September 26th. That's tomorrow morning. Letcher County's expired back in August, and we've not heard about the status of the one in Hindman. A Kentucky school shooter is up for parole who's up for parole is set to learn what his future holds this week. Michael Carneal gave his testimony to a two-person parole board last week, and that board could not come to a decision on its own. So he'll go before a full board tomorrow. Carneal was convicted of killing three of his classmates and shooting five others at Heath High School back on December 1st, 1997. He was a, a 14-year-old freshman at the time and got sentenced to life in prison with the option for parole after 25 years. Carneal told the board last Tuesday that voices in his head led him to bringing five guns to the school and pull the trigger on that morning. He said he still hears those voices, but he hasn't acted on them. Board members noted that there's only been one violent incident in his 25 years in prison. Carneal believes if he's given the chance, he can become a productive member of society. One person is dead after a crash in Laurel County. This happened around 2 this afternoon on Slate Lick Church Road, about four miles east of London. The sheriff says a vehicle left the roadway and hit a tree. The driver was taken to the hospital where he died a short time later. The victim has been identified as 61-year-old Donald Howard of East Bernstadt. No one else was in the vehicle at the time of the crash and no other vehicles were involved. A man is in custody Saturday night after leading police on a pursuit. Wayne County, West Virginia Sheriff Rick Thompson said Dustin Johnson was arrested Saturday. Deputies were responding to a domestic disturbance that involved Johnson. 
They say Johnson attempted to run, then hit a police cruiser before crashing his car over an embankment. Methamphetamine was found inside his vehicle, according to investigators. He faces charges of fleeing in a vehicle, expired operators, no insurance, obstructing and possession of a controlled substance. He also had warrants for domestic assault and destruction of property. Police in Floyd County are asking for your help to find a stolen utility trailer. In a Facebook post on Trooper Michael Coleman's page, Kentucky State Police in Pikeville are looking for a 2016 Homesteader trailer that was stolen from the Bull Creek Flea Market near Prestonsburg between September 18th and September 23rd. Police say the trailer had reflective mining clothing inside. If you know where this trailer might be, you can contact the KSB Post in Pikeville at 606-433-7711. Rain has moved out, clouds on the way out as well, and now the fog is moving in. Let's take a look and see what's going on across our region tonight. And you see a lot of zeros out there and numbers less than five, which means limited visibility. It's mainly near the Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia borders, but again, it could spread out across the region overnight. So be aware of that. London Corbin Airport, pretty quiet after a beautiful sunset earlier. Down to 57 already out that way. Dew points in the low 50s. Pressure, bare metric pressure 29.89 so that means high pressure is building in behind that front and it's a calm wind for now we take a look and see temperatures falling quickly already 52 in Jonesville 50 or excuse me 66 there in Prestonsburg 57 Clintwood and Wise 57 in London 56 in Irvine 65 in Jackson and Pikeville and 63 in Hazard that's several degrees warmer though than 24 hours ago in most spots but you can see those temperatures dropping back out toward Lake Cumberland and into central Kentucky Kentucky winds are shifting a little bit there. Not too bad right now, but it might make it feel a little bit cool at times overnight. So basically we will fall into the low to mid 50s by tomorrow morning and then rebound quickly with sunshine on your Monday. Keaton, I can do 57. Thank you, Brandon. Some Kentucky voters can now request an absentee ballot for this year's midterm election. Ballots can be requested through the Secretary of State's website. Absentee ballots are only available to voters with a qualifying excuse. Those include things like age, disability, or those temporarily living outside of the state. You can find full list of ballot excuses and track your ballot at GoVoteKY.com. The deadline to apply for an absentee ballot is October 25th. The midterm election is Tuesday, November 8th. Well, a big issue in this year's election is going to be recession and how people respond. Well, with fears growing of a recession, there's concern about the nationwide housing market. CBS's Mark Strassman explains why. Inflation stubbornly above 8%. The Dow ending this week below 30,000. Vanished nearly two years of gains. Interest rates up three points in six months. And worse, we're all flying blind here. No one knows with any certainty where the economy will be a year or more from now. That uncertainty is now hitting us where we live. We do like Let's these cabinets. In America's worsening housing crunch. Over that two-year feeding frenzy to overpay. Many buyers shudder at mortgage rates above 6% the highest in 14 years. What's even more significant is how much sellers are pulling back. If you borrowed money at 3% to buy a house, you're never going to leave. Another issue, so-called shelter inflation, surging home prices and rents racing faster than wages. We're going to be feeling this. It's not just one part of the country. It's almost all parts of the country. Moody's Analytics says more than half of America's largest regional markets are significantly overvalued by 25% or more. 210 out of 413 markets, many pandemic boom towns. Moody's number one, Boise. Home prices 72% too high. Other overvalued areas, Austin, Charlotte, Las Vegas, and Phoenix. I expect national house prices nationwide, you know, across all these markets, to probably fall about 10% peak to trough, you know, over the next year or two. But in much of America, affordable housing is an ongoing crisis. Many experts say that should improve slowly if the Fed can nudge supply and demand into a healthier place and confidence in the economy can find a new home of its own. The Fed has already indicated it's going to keep raising interest rates beyond current levels. So whatever pressures America's housing market is feeling now will only get more intense. Mark Strassman, CBS News. 
With fall temperatures here in many parts of the country, Americans are bracing for higher home heating bills. Families are expected to pay an average of 17% more for home heat this coming season compared to last winter. Those who heat with natural gas are facing the highest increase of more than 34% this season. Electric heat is expected to see a 7% increase. The Biden administration is asking Congress for additional funding to help low-income families stay warm this winter. Coming up at 11, how the Florida state and federal government are preparing for a possible hurricane. We need to track that possible hurricane, now Tropical Storm Ian, to see where the system might make landfall later this week and what impact it could have on our region here in the mountains. I have the latest in just a few minutes.